this was the night when I showed the world that I'm more than just a talker. I remember a lot of things. I remember everybody telling me Koto was struggling with the weight. I said, oh, that's a good thing. That's always a positive, you know? You know, people like to say sometimes Koto was weight drained when he fought me, but I like to call him weight gained when he fought me because he had so much time to regain and rehydrate. I mean, we, that, I've never seen a weigh in that early, 12 p.m. the day before a fight. I've never seen a weigh in that early. Move it, move it. 138 and a quarter. We weighed in. I remember. Uh, going to sleep and saying like, wow, tomorrow is a big day, it's a big, it's a big night. I remember the fact that it was a Madison Square Garden and thinking like, wow, it would be amazing to win a world championship in my hometown, you know? I've never been a guy people, that many people rooted for. I think I've always been the guy people love to root against. And I think that's where my fan base comes in. Is I don't have a fan base that loves me. I, I think I have, mostly have, I have a fan base that hates me. Here's the entry of Paulie Malinaji, the native New Yorker, in his first ever world championship fight. Slick, flashy, cocky, but untested. I relish being the villain. And I relish being that guy that comes into the arena and everybody wants to see him get his block knocked off, you know? But, but at the same time, I, I, I crave the noise. I crave the electricity in the arena. And I remember distinctly when Miguel's music started, it felt like the roof was going to blow off the building, you know? Because like, they knew he was coming out. I was like, all right, it's time, you know? It's going to be time. 26 unbeaten fights. The WBO light welterweight champion of the world. He will have put on a lot of weight since the weigh-in, where he looked, well, in the face anyway, positively skeletal. I said, you know what? Let's just fight, man. Let's do this. Introducing the challenger, Holly, the Magic Man. The last thing I remember before the bell rang was um, everybody was out of the ring, I'm looking across the ring at Koda waiting for the bell to ring, and he's got his back to me because he always likes to start with his back to the, to the ropes. And um, I just remember flash bulbs going off in the entire arena, and I was just like, wow, I was like, it's here, you know? Miguel Cotto, sixth defense of the WBO light welterweight championship, and looking for a big right hand. Look for the fast, slick tactics of Malinaji fighting at home a dream fight he says in a dream venue and he tries to throw a right hand after smoke of the referee had said break is there a bit of damage blood there is by Malinaji's left eye yeah a little trickle of blood he butted me the first clinch we got into he butted me I think it was part of the plan. He's, I think he's probably going to say, I'm going to show this hot shot, you know, what it is to be in the big time. And, um, you know, it's not, just, uh, it's not just clean fighting in the big time. It's you knowing how to fight dirty, too. And the first clinch we got into, he butted me. And I felt like drips coming down my face. And it just felt different than I had felt before in my career. I'd never been cut before. I couldn't see out of the eye. It was blurry. And I said, man, that's not sweat. Because sweat, I would be able to see through it. And I got to a clinch, and I put my head on his shoulders. And I saw the blood on his shoulders, and I said, wow, it's a cut. You know, and that was my first cut of my career. Almost a fever pitch atmosphere around ringside. Everybody's got seats, but they're all standing up here. All 16,000 of them. It's a good first round. It's not known as any kind of puncher, Malinaji. Only five stoppage wins in his career. But he mixed it with Cotto there and lived to tell the tale, but with a cut, a nasty cut. The electricity in the crowd is crazy, and it takes them a few rounds to settle in, you know? And I just remember feeling like, wow, it's so loud in here, I can't even hear myself think, you know? 
and the bell rang. I had to wake up. <laughs> and I got woken up, unfortunately, by being knocked down. But <laughs> from Cotto after he's taken the jab and Malinaji is down he doesn't look badly dazed he got straight back up but it's a mandatory eight a visit to the canvas for the cocky one I wasn't hurt luckily you know I've been more hurt standing up you know it luckily was literally a flash where I was fine but I just remember thinking man 10 eight rounds you know like this is not a good start and he got me right on my orbit bone which he broke on the knockdown punch to this day I don't have a lot of feeling here because the nerve is damaged from that punch but um in the moment, I thought my tooth got knocked out. You know, I said, oh, I cannot believe this guy just knocked my tooth out, you know? And I thought, I have nightmares about losing my teeth. I, like, you know, I have all my real teeth. Not, to, not too many fighters have all their real teeth, you know? I just remember thinking, man, I can't believe this guy just knocked my tooth out. And I lost a 10-8 round, you know? And I had to settle into the fight. It took me a few rounds, you know? That's the experience of it. The blood's got a bit worse again. Just blinking away, the blood. Malinaji. And again, he pops out the jab, but he's got hit again by Cotto. He needs to be a bit more elusive than this. He needs to get away again, I think, once he's landed his punches. Maybe a bit more movement. I remember I got goosebumps. I remember, like, as I'm boxing, I remember thinking to myself, this is why I do this. This is why I do this, what I do for a living. The most good work again, fast combinations, slick, flashy, good to watch. Well, he's dancing rings around him at the moment, isn't he, Malinaji? Fighters like me fight the way we fight because we're good enough to pull it off. Because if everyone could fight like us, a hit and knock a hit style, everybody would do it. But not everybody's good enough. Not everybody's talented enough to pull that off. So whenever people see brawlers and then they see a guy who fights a hit and don't get hit style, they're like, oh, that guy's just scared to get hit. No, he's just talented enough to do it. While the guy who brawls it out all the time may be more exciting, but he has no choice. He's not good enough to fight hit and don't get hit. One, two, three, four, five, six punches from Malinaji. This is good. It's hard to just outbox a guy like Cotto. He's so adept at forcing you to fight his fight, cutting you off, um, basically hitting you with elbows and headbutts every time he gets close. And you have no choice but a lot of times for him to be close to you because there's not a lot of room there, you know? Oh, oh big this shot. Place He's hurting with that. He needs to hold on, Malinaji. He was shaking a bit on the inside. And he's holding on and he's using, he showed good experience there to buy a few seconds, having been rocked by one. And trust me, I've been in the ring with Cotto. That guy knows how to cut the ring off, he knows how to beat you to the punch, he knows how to be, take you to the trenches when you don't want to be there. Cotto rams one into the body. Blood from the nose now of Malinaji as well. He's certainly wearing the scars of this battle. I remember there was spots in the fight where I was just like sitting in the corner just wondering like what's going on you know and I was swallowing a lot of blood and I, I was my face was just grotesquely swollen and I, and I was actually worried about what might be happening to me the temptation to want to quit in a tough situation comes with all of us it's the human instinct your, your brain doesn't want to suffer you know there's a little battle going on inside your brain in those moments where it's like nah stop nah don't stop stop nah don't stop nah you work too hard for this nah screw it you know you'll, you'll, you'll live to fight another day nah you work too hard for this and for me every time though you work too hard for this wins out but trust me we're all human those thoughts cross your mind I'm looking across the ring and just being like man if I want to win this fight I gotta take it to him I can't even try to box anymore I'm too behind on the scorecards I got I gotta fight him man I'm just like oh man and um, I said all right gotta do it nice counter from Malinaji and a jab as well he's boxed beautifully at times he's had to hold a lot a valid tactic really all things considered well I have Cotto hanging on to his title by one point because of this impressive last round he's done deep and he's pulled it out in the last round to get it on my card. But yep. I can't wait to see what the judges, how they see it. I gave Cotto the last three rounds, and I've got him retaining as well here. But it doesn't tell the story of a wonderful performance by Pauli Malinaji. So I'm expecting to hear 118, 119s across the board, you know. And I hear 115, 112, and my face is just disgusted, you know. And the, the other two scorecards were 116, 111. And you see me make a face like, what I'm thinking in that moment is, 
This fight was closer than I thought, and nobody was letting me know that. And still champion, Miguel Cotto. I don't think anything's broke because I don't think I'll be able to move it, and I don't, I don't think I'll be able to talk if it was broke. But you know, it's. Uh, I don't know if anything can stop you from talking, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, man, I'm so disappointed, man. I wanted I, to win so bad. But, well, if it's know, any man. consolation to you, you fought a tremendously creative fight. People here appreciated it very, very much. It's definitely a loss that has haunted me. You know, every loss hurts and every loss bites you. I think we all, as men, like to think we will never quit. As men, we all like to think, oh no, uh, in the tough situation, I'm a man. We're all tough with our mouths. Nobody knows for sure until you're in that situation. And uh, I always talked it. Uh, I found out a little bit about myself, you know.